Well, the spring walleye run on the Detroit River is well underway. And if you haven't made it out yet, you're already missing out. Uh, We went out two days this week, put two 18 fish limits in the boat already. And um, the first day, that limit came in about two and a half hours. The second day, it took a little longer. We got out about an hour and a half later than we did the first day. So it took a little bit longer with that sun being up high in the sky, uh, but we were still able to make some adjustments and put some fish in the boat. So in this video, I thought as the season's getting started here, it might uh, be helpful to some folks to talk about what I think are the top five mistakes folks make when they're jigging for these walleye in the river. So if you go out this spring and you see a lot of folks around you catching fish and you're not, you're probably making one of these mistakes. So stick around. So the first mistake I think a lot of folks make is that they're just not fishing where there are fish. And um, obviously, if you're right in the middle of a pack of boats where guys are hauling in fish left and right, you know that's not the case. You know fish are there. But if you find yourself separated from the pack and you're not finding and you're not catching anything, it may just be because there are no fish around. And usually the reason for that is that you're fishing the wrong depth of water. When the spring run on the Detroit River gets going in full swing, that river is loaded with fish, uh, especially right now. Um, For those that aren't aware, I do have a blog site. And about a year ago, I did an article with um, a guy by the name of Jim Francis of the Michigan DNR. And he talked about the class of walleye that we have right now in Lake Erie and how it is uh, almost record breaking in its size. And that means that there's a lot of fish that are running up these rivers in the spring to spawn. So this means it's really just a matter of finding the depth of water the fish like on any given day. And that has a lot to do with the lighting conditions that are in the water. I did a video on this here just a few weeks ago. If you haven't uh, checked that video out, I'll drop a link in the description. But while I don't like light, they like uh, low light conditions. And so the depth of water you find them in is going to be related to those lighting conditions. On a bright sunny day in clear water, generally you're going to find them pretty deep. Uh, But early in the mornings uh, when the sun is low or when it's a cloudy day and or when the water itself is very cloudy, they'll tend to be shallower. So it's a matter of just finding that sweet spot uh, based on the day's lighting conditions. All right, the number four reason that uh, I think folks tend to miss a lot of fish and don't catch as many is because they're just not using the right colors. If you've watched some of my previous videos, again, I've talked about this at length, the color has a lot to do with the lighting conditions that are in the water. So this is somewhat related uh, to the first mistake, which is finding the right uh, finding the right lighting conditions to find fish. But then when you're in those uh, conditions, you need to pick a bait color that helps the fish see them and, and looks like something they would eat. I'm not going to get into too great detail here, but in general, when the water is very stained and it's hard to see, it's more important that you have something that's bright and flashy that the fish can find because their opportunity to to catch that bait is just very short because they can't see. So when it's dark, you know, use something that's, um, you know, got some chartreuse in it, maybe a hot pink, uh, maybe the tail of the plastic bait you're using is, is got some chartreuse on it or some hot pink on it. That allows the fish to see it and they don't get a lot of time to analyze it. They need to bite it or they're going to not see it again. And that's, that's where the, the color is, you know, really comes in into play. When you're in more natural lighting conditions, clearer water where the sun is up bright, you may need to go to a more natural looking plastic bait uh, tipped onto that jig. Um, I'll I'll drop, again, links in the description to previous videos I've done on this. All right, moving on to the number three mistake I think folks make, and that is not tipping their um, presentation with some live bait. Oftentimes, although you'll catch plenty of fish with uh, with a, a, a jig or plastic without any live bait on it, it usually helps to have a little live bait or scent on that jig. And again, it's just another, it gives the fish another sense that it's real, what it's, what it's chasing and pursuing and trying to eat is real. And uh, early in the season, usually that's a live minnow. As the walleye season, as the water warms up and you get into later April and May, a lot of times folks will move on to night crawlers. Um, something to give a little odor and, and, and give that fish just that extra assurance that what they're chasing is something that's a uh, real food for them. All 
All right. Uh, getting down to the nitty gritty now, the number two reason that I think a lot of folks uh, don't catch as many fish on the Detroit River is that they're not using stinger hooks. And if you have not fished the river before, or if you have and have never used stinger hooks, you are definitely missing a certain percentage of fish that you'd be putting in the boat otherwise. Now, so far this year, the fish have been pretty aggressive, and we've only caught a few fish on the actual stinger hook. Most of the fish we've caught with that jig right back in the walleye's mouth. But there are a certain percentage of fish that you will lose without that stinger hook. It just adds certain assurances that when the fish bites, if the if they don't bite uh get that whole bait in their mouth, a lot of times they'll just grab the tail and that stinger hook will catch them. So if you're not using stinger hooks, you probably should be. And if you don't know how to tie those up, again, I'll drop a link in the description for how I like to tie my stinger hooks. And finally, here we are at number one. So the number one mistake I think folks make when they're jigging for walleye on the Detroit River is that they're not using the right jigging technique. And there are a few reasons for this. Um, one could be that you're on the bottom, but you're on the bottom too much. In other words, you're letting that bait drag the bottom and you're not keeping it picked up and, and just kind of lightly bumping the bottom on the jig stroke. But probably the biggest thing that I see most people uh, make a mistake here is that the bait is being jigged too aggressively or too high, especially early in the season when the water is cold, the fish need to be they don't the fish don't have a lot of energy and they are not going to be able to catch up to a bait that's being jigged too aggressively most fishermen know that when you're in cold conditions presentations need to be much slower but there is a subtlety here that can make a huge difference and i'm going to show you an example of that my nephew who's the one in the sort of the camo um coveralls here uh was out catching my son and i and we're we're in obviously in the bright yellow at a rate of about one and a half to one. So he was catching about 50% more fish than we were on the first day here. And we noticed that he was using a, a slightly slower and, and less herky-jerky jigging stroke than my son and I were. And once we started slowing ours down a little bit, we started picking up more fish. So the, the, if, if you can have the, the best color on, you can have fish that would be interested in your, in your bait all day long. You can be over hundreds of fish, but if you're, um, using a jigging stroke that doesn't allow the fish to ever catch up with it, um, then you're never going to catch a fish. And I think this is the number one mistake most people make. So as promised, um, I'll go over the three baits that we primarily used for the two days that caught almost all the fish. In fact, I don't know that there was a bait that caught anything um, other than these three because it's kind of what we stuck to. But the one that probably caught the most fish is a Lunker City uh, finesse fish, four inch, that's uh, in the pattern called purple ice. And it had a chartreuse tail. Um, you can buy them that way, but if you can't find the ones with the chartreuse tail, there is a product called Spike It that I've mentioned in previous videos. It's sort of a dye that you can dip the tail of the plastic in and it will turn the tail of any plastic chartreuse. And because chartreuse is such a great color to use when jigging for walleye in the Detroit River, I make sure I always have a bottle of that on the boat. Uh, just to help add a little flash of color to the tail of just about any plastic I use. The bait that probably caught the next most fish is called Blue Ice. Um, I featured this in previous videos as well. Um, it's one of the most popular color patterns, especially when the water is clear. Now, last year, I used Wonder Bread pattern for the for most of my fish, and the water was much more stained last year than it is than it has been so far this year. So on the two days we fished, because the water was pretty clear, uh, the ice colors, the, adding that little flash, a little bit more natural looking, uh, seemed to be the ticket. And then the last uh, pattern that did catch fish for me was the Wonder Bread pattern. I uh, fished two days, we fished two days, and the day of the eclipse, in the middle part of the day, when the eclipse started and the lighting conditions started getting low, um, I had used Wonder Bread a little bit before that and really wasn't picking up much um, because we were in deeper water in that middle part of the day. And I was thinking maybe it was dark enough down there that it would be effective, and it wasn't. It wasn't doing much for me, but uh, I put it back on when the eclipse started, and as the conditions got darker, I started picking up fish, and that picked up four or five fish for me in the, in the next hour pretty quickly. So um, those were the three uh, color patterns that work best for us. Obviously, there's dozens of others that will work. It's really just a matter of finding what's most effective, what's catching you fish at a rate that you're satisfied with. So that's about going to do it for this week's video. I hope you found this one helpful. Um, the mistakes to avoid will certainly help you put more fish in the boat. 
And um, hopefully you find that right color pattern based on the water conditions where you're fishing. And hope you have a great season. And we'll see you next time.